Hello, I'm Dr. Frida, and thank you for tuning in to our YouTube Live. I'm here with my practice manager, Shador. Hi. And today we are going to have a live Q&A session on seasonal allergies. April showers bring May flowers, and they also bring, you've probably noticed, runny noses, itching eyes, itching ears, itching throat, sneezing because of seasonal allergies. And it's really something because even people who've never been affected by seasonal allergies before, with this high pollen count, you have a lot of people complaining. And there's a lot of confusion on if they're having a cold or if they're having seasonal allergies. So first, I want to just do a brief overview on seasonal allergies. And then we have some questions that have come in about seasonal allergies. I'll answer those questions. And if you have questions that you want to ask, just go in, type your questions, and we'll answer your questions live on our YouTube Live. So what are seasonal allergies? Seasonal allergies are also called hay fever or allergic rhinitis, and it refers to the inflammation or the irritation of the nasal passages in the upper airways. When you get this inflammation, it can cause you to have a runny nose, itchy eyes, itchy ears, nasal congestion, you can get sneezing, and if you have seasonal allergies chronically, you can even get shortness of breath or you can get wheezing. And basically, it's caused by a triggered immune system where you get a release of certain immune cells like basophils and mast cells and you get a release of histamines, which cause that inflammation and that swelling, which is why antihistamines can be one of the treatments for allergies. So let's just get right into it. And Shador, what questions do we have on seasonal allergies? All right. So this is from DS. Okay, DS. Um, with seasonal allergies, there are such things as winter allergies. That's a good question. There actually is a such thing as winter allergies. Now, for the classic seasonal allergies, in the spring and in the winter is when they start to present. But when people talk about winter allergies, strictly winter allergies, they're usually talking about the three most common allergies, dust mites, cockroach dander or cockroach droppings, and pet dander. And these three allergens tend to be more prominent in the winter months because there tends to be less ventilation in the home. So these are the classic winter allergies. So some things that can be done to combat winter allergies include, one, keeping the humidity down because dust mites like it when humidity. So if you keep a humidity down to less than 50%, that helps to decrease dust mites. Also being sure to wash your bedding, specifically with hot water, water that's hotter, hotter than 130 degrees Fahrenheit. That helps to kill the dust mites. They don't like the hot and they don't like low humidity. If you have carpet, like wall-to-wall -wall carpet, especially on concrete, you want to remove that carpet if you can because pet dander, dust mites, different droppings can get caught underneath that. And if you have mold that develops between the carpet and the concrete, then you could get dampness, you can get mold. So the dander, the dust mites, the mold tend to love carpet. So if you're able to have non-carpeting, that helps as well. And then making sure beyond washing the bedding, you want to wash other things. Like if you have pets, of course, they get dander caught up in their fur. So you want to wash them at least once a week if you can. Same thing with your clothing, your hair, you want to wash frequently to get rid of dander. So yes, there's a such thing as winter allergies and dust mites, cockroach droppings, and pet dander, dander are those three allergens that are most common in winter allergies. Nice to know. <laughs> I have allergies. Uh, I suffer from allergies uh, every season. Every season. Every season. <laughs> Winter, spring, summer, and fall. Yes. Um, question from uh, SL. What if, why am I wheezing and coughing? Can pollen reach into my lungs? That's an excellent question. When we talk about seasonal allergies, we're typically talking about those upper airways. So just your nostrils, the back of your throat. That's where the hay fever typically is. But if you have chronic allergies, then your immune system can be triggered beyond your upper airways, and it can also go down into your lungs. So your windpipe or your trachea, your bronchioles, and then the bronchioles, those smaller windpipes. You can get inflammation all the way down, which can cause a shortness of breath and a wheezing. So yes, chronic allergies, chronic seasonal allergies can definitely cause wheezing and shortness of breath. Uh, why do my symptoms seem to be worse at night or morning? This is coming from EM. Why are the symptoms worse? At night or in the morning. Yeah. Okay. Symptoms. 
good question. So that's a positional thing. So with seasonal allergies, oftentimes you get a nasal drip where you have a thin, clear, watery discharge. So when you're upright moving around in the day, that nasal drip is going to come out of your nose and you'll feel it and you'll blow your nose. Well, what happens at night? At night, you're lying down flat in a supine position. That nasal drip has to go somewhere. So where does it go? To the back of your throat. And when that nasal drip goes to the back of your throat, they call it post nasal drip and it irritates your throat, giving you a cough. So a lot of people with seasonal allergies find that the symptoms are worse in the nighttime because they're lying down and their drip is going to their throat and they're coughing, or in the morning where it's been dripping to the back of your throat all night. So you wake up and you're <coughs> making all these noises, trying to get rid of it. So it's the post-nasal drip and it's your position at nighttime and early in the morning that that makes the symptoms worse. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. uh that's uh, a there for the post nasal drip. Oh, that gets you? Yes, it was See, yeah. I think I saw for at least a week at a time when it happens, it's terrible. That's awful. But um, treatable, it's manageable. Yeah. And also, if you have any questions, remember to type those questions in for us to read those or ask those for you all. Dr. Frida will be happy to answer all the questions. That answer you live. <laughs> live Q&A, seasonal allergies. All right. I have a question from Tanya. Are there long-term health effects from pollen? And if so, what are they? Long-term health effects from pollen. So really it relates to the previous question on can pollen make me wheeze, can it affect me? Again, when you have that chronic pollen, that pollen is triggering your immune system, causing you to constantly release those immune-mediated cells with swelling in your airways, not just the upper ones, the ones down in the lungs, in the lungs as well. So you can indeed have chronic lung issues with wheezing, shortness of breath. And if you have long-term wheezing and shortness of breath, that means your body's not getting the oxygen it needs. So then it becomes even bigger than your respiratory system, your breathing system, and you're now depriving other organs of proper oxygen if that chronic allergic rhinitis, that chronic seasonal allergies is severe. So yes, the pollen can have long-term effects. So it's important to try to treat it or to prevent it. So how are you going to prevent it? One of the things is irrigating your nasal passage with nasal saline. So you can buy it over the counter. You get these nozzles that are full of the salt water, the nasal saline. You put the nozzle up your nose and you aim toward the outside corner of that same eye where the, the nasal saline is being sprayed. And you irrigate, irrigate, irrigate. You stand over the sink and you just let that water flow through your nose, come out the other nostril, through your mouth. Salt water tastes kind of awful, but it gets rid of that pollen. And you do this two to three times a day during seasonal allergy season. And that's just one way to prevent having that chronic long-term pollen effect. Okay. Thank you. Uh, D is, as um, you mentioned, over the counter. Mm -hmm. um, when do I know if I need to go to the doctor for my allergies or versus taking over the counter medications? That's a good question. So prevention is key. So before even starting over the counter medications, again, you want to prevent. And so you irrigate your nostrils with that nasal saline that gets sort of pollen as well as other things like pet dander or small things that can irritate your system. The other thing you want to do to prevent, even before treating, prevent, is when you go out, especially during high pollen counts, you want to wear sunglasses to try to keep the pollen from getting into the eyes. You want to wear a wide brim hat to keep the pollen from falling down into your face. Prevention, prevention. Change clothes when you come from outside where there's pollen. Wash, wash your pets down, scrub your pets down so they don't give you the, the pollen or the dander. So you do all these things to prevent. And of course, if you can avoid going outside, stay from outside when there's a high pollen count. But as far as treating, you should always consult your physicians and have regular appointments for whatever you do. But there are some things that you can start with at home. So some of the non-sedating antihistamines like loratadine or claritin, Allegra, Zyrtec, those over-counter medications, when taken as directed, as long as you're healthy and as long as your physician has not given you any contraindication, then you can take those things as a start. And if you're finding a good relief from those and it's from the nasal saline irrigation, then you should be fine if those, are, if those things are improving your symptoms. There's also nasal steroids like Flonase, where you first want to Clean out your nostrils, get rid of all the mucus and everything that's lining your nostrils, clean that out. And then you take that Flonase or the nasal steroid, put that nozzle up your nose, 
aim for the outside corner of the eye and you spray it up there. Don't blow right away. Kind of pinch your nose, let that medicine get in there. And what it does, the nasal steroids, they help to decrease the inflammation in your nasal passages and they allow your sinuses to drain and help to prevent you from getting that sinusitis or sinus infections. The reason I have you to aim in the nostril and, and toward the outside corner of the same eye is because there are certain ostia or little holes inside of your nose and they help you to drain the sinuses. And if you aim there, then you're making sure the medicine goes where it needs to. If you aim straight up your nose, then the medicine is not really even going on the skin inside of your nostrils and mucous membranes, but you're just gonna inhale it and swallow it and that defeats the purpose. So definitely aim that nozzle toward the outside corner of your eye of the same nostril. So you try those things and then you just watch your symptoms and you see, is this making a difference? Am I getting better? But if it's not, if you're still having the itchy eyes, the runny nose, nasal congestion, itchy ears, and you're just miserable, that's when you know you definitely need to go in and consult your physician. And if things are really severe, you may be referred to an allergy specialist. What if I think I just have a cold? Oh, the cold versus the allergies. I get this a lot here in Atlanta, Georgia at Emory. I have patients who come in and they're just like, I got a cold. Give me some antibiotics. Give me something. And they have classic symptoms of allergic rhinitis or hay fever, seasonal allergies. And so there are a few things that set colds or viral infections apart from seasonal allergies. One thing is the type of discharge. So I mentioned that with uh, seasonal allergies, you get a thin, clear, watery nasal drip or nasal discharge. When you have an infection, it tends to be a thicker, more viscous discharge, and it can have a tint like a greenish or yellowish color. So pay attention to the nasal discharge. Also, with a cold, the symptoms tend to be limited. They'll last anywhere from two to 10 days, for most people, five to seven days. And then if it's just a virus, then your body will typically resolve that cold on its own. But for seasonal allergies, they last weeks, months, they come in, they come out, they're worse with pollen exposure or with pet dander exposure, and it's just a longer duration. But if it's a short duration, it's a cold. If it's something that's chronic, it's more likely seasonal allergies. And then when you're sneezing with seasonal allergies, it's because of an irritation to your system, an irritation to the nasal passages. So you tend to sneeze like a rapid fire, like, <laughs> like fast sneezes. Or with a cold, you do a <laughs> one good sneeze. You like my impression of me? I <laughs> Thank you. That's free of charge. But um, there, there, are few, there are some other differences as well. But if you are in the middle of pollen and all of a sudden you have a cold that's lasting for weeks, it may be seasonal allergy. So consult your physician and go ahead and get you some nasal saline and irrigate your nasal passages. Okay. Um, EMS. Okay. I wasn't born with allergies. Why do I have them now? Who is a lot of mad adults? It's a lot of mad adults because over 20 million Americans are affected by seasonal allergies, and over 50, 50 million Americans are affected with allergies in general. Even though most people present as children, they're running around here with the puffy eyes and runny noses, and what they call the allergic shiners, where they like they have black eyes because of all the congestion. Most people present like this when they're children, but if you're in a place where there's high pollen counts, lots of dander, lots of allergens, then you are a full-grown adult, a whole adult, and you can now have allergies. It's just a matter of the environment. So you have it because even though your body either was never exposed to the pollen or the allergens before, once you're exposed to a high enough amount, then your immune system can react even as an adult. A surprise. You got seasonal allergies. Oh, wow. <laughs> and, you're, and you're mad right now. Oh, my goodness. All right. Question from D is, uh, my child is 11 years old. Okay. He is constantly trying to clear his throat and his eyes itch. Mm. How do I know if he really has allergies? Well, if he has an, if he, if his eyes itch and he's making that sound, I that, that, oh, God, well, it's a relieving sound where you can kind of scratch your own throat. That's free of charge also, my sound effects there. It sounds like there's a high chance that he could have a seasonal allergy. So pay attention. Is he doing these things mainly first thing in the morning or while he's lying down and getting that post-nasal drip? 
are these things happening seasonally? When that pollen count is high, are you seeing your child scratch his eyes more, itch his throat more? And are his symptoms lasting for a short period of time or is it chronic weeks to days? If it's soccer season, he's out there in all that fresh cut grass playing soccer, is he having the itchy eyes when he comes home? If so, it does sound like it's more of an allergic rhinitis or a seasonal allergy. What can you do to start? Irrigate those nostrils, get rid of that pollen, get rid of that all the allergens two to three times a day. And if the irrigation alone doesn't help and if trying to avoid the allergens doesn't help, then you can try a properly dosed medication, an antihistamine over the counter. I still would consult the physician because, of course, if your child has something like asthma, other allergies, some chronic condition, you want to make sure that it's okay with your physician that he takes those medicines. But if he's doing that itching throat and he's doing the scratching eyes in a seasonal allergy time, such as it is right now, chances are that he has seasonal allergies. Very well explained. Again, if you have any questions for Dr. Frieda to answer, if she had not answered one of your questions, remember to type those questions in so she can get those answered for you. Moving on to EM. EM. <laughs> what are some, some non-medicinal ways to treat allergies? Ah, some non-medicinal ways to treat allergies. So there are a lot of natural remedies. Here's the trick with natural the natural remedies. A lot of times we don't have the large randomized controlled trials. So in other words, I don't necessarily have a lot of hard scientific data to support the natural remedies, but there have been different limited studies or observational studies. I will tell you some of the natural remedies or holistic remedies that have been talked about. But again, I don't have any large hard data on these. These are just anecdotal studies, which may work for you and tend to work for some people. I would consult your physician. One thing, raw honey, particularly raw honey that is local for the where the bees have been using the, the pollen. Some people say taking a teaspoon of the raw honey helps. And remember, for this video, it is informational. This is an informational video. This does not replace you going to your physician for a consultation. So remember, everyone, go out, consult your physician before you make any medical decisions for yourself. This is an informational video only. Back to the natural remedies. So honey is one of the things. Another natural remedy, pineapple. Now I love a good pineapple. Pineapple contains something called bromelain, a proteolytic enzyme, which actually helps to decrease the effects of histamine. So basically, this enzyme in Pineapple helps to decrease the congestion in your nasal passageways. Another thing, cayenne pepper. Now, again, this is not based on any hard, randomized, controlled scientific data. This is just more anecdotal, informational. So, again, consult your physician. But you asked about some of the non-medicine. So cayenne pepper, some say that that's good for the allergies and it helps to open up the sinuses and helps them to drain. Other things like figs have been reported to help with uh, allergies. And then even certain exercises like yoga. Certain exercises like yoga, they say the position like the bridge position or the cobra position can help to open up the chest, open up the airways and help things to drain. Once again, I don't have that based on any hard scientific data, small studies, limited studies, but it's some food for thought for you to take to your physician and see if it's worth a try. Thank you. <laughs> I have a question from viewer Nakairo. Nakairo, I hope I'm saying it correctly. Hi, Nakairo. Uh, and viewer asks, how do I get the medicine? How do you get the medicine? Mm -hmm. Well, luckily, most of that medicine is over the counter. So if you're having some of these seasonal allergy symptoms and you need the nasal saline over the counter, you can get it from your local pharmacy, even your supermarket, your grocery store where there's a pharmacy section, and they literally have nasal saline where you can drain your nostrils. They also have the neti pots. Oh boy, a good old neti pot where you can put some warm, not too hot, but just some slightly warmed salt water in the pot. And there's a nozzle that's specially formulated where you lean over the sink, you put that nozzle in your nostril and you just drain, drain, drain. And you just watch all of that mucus flow out and it cleans that you do that neti pot and you can do it several times a day. Once you've done that, then you can go to the store over the counter and you can buy non-sedating antihistamines like the Zyrtec, Allegra, Claritin. You can also purchase the nasal steroids if need be. 
And there are sedating antihistamines as well, diphenhydramine, also called Benadryl. But again, it's an antihistamine. It cuts down on the inflammation. Again, make sure that you do consult your physician. But as far as just trying to treat your symptoms, these are over-the-counter things that you can try. Thank you. Great question. Sure. Thank you for asking. Um, follow up on the nitty pot. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned three times a day. Does mucus build up that quickly? Oh, my gosh. Yes. When your body is being irritated by allergens, these tiny, some microscopic or some just very small particles that trigger the immune system, then what those histamines do, those things that come from the basal cells and the mast cells, it is their job to cause swelling, cause mucus production. And so you can be getting constant mucus production. And what happens once the mucus has been sitting there for a while? Well, it dries up and or just becomes sticky where every little piece of pollen or dander you inhale just sits there. And it makes the immune system react even further, making things worse. So a lot of people, at least three times a day, need to get that nasal saline, irrigate, 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 and try to give, try not to give those allergens a chance to really trigger your immune system like that. So wow. yes, mucus is, is on the rise <laughs> during pollen, pollen season. Uh, I have a question here from uh, Diaz. Hi, Diaz. Do I have to have the dreaded allergy testing for seasonal allergies? You're kind of dramatic, Diaz, to call it <laughs> dreaded. But in answer to the question, not necessarily. This is where you will need to consult your physician to really know what is specific to you. But everyone who has allergies does not have to have the skin test because if you have allergies that are easily prevented or treated with some of these home remedies or these over-the-counter remedies and you really feel good and you don't have shortness of breath and you're not having the symptoms, well, great. Then you're most likely doing okay. And of course, you just do regular follow-ups with your physician. But if you try these over-the-counter things, you tried some of the natural home remedies and you're still not getting any kind of relief, well, it may not be allergies or it may be a more severe, difficult to treat allergy. In that case, your physician will very likely need to refer you to an allergy specialist who will very likely do blood tests or that skin allergy testing. But right away, as soon as you get symptoms, you don't automatically have to run and go to the get skin allergy testing. First, you can try some things at home, you know, as long as your physician agrees. But if things are severe, then you may have to get the dreaded skin test, as you describe it, DS. <laughs> All right, Eva M. Um, is there or when is the best time to take allergy meds? I guess in the morning, in the evening. Well, most people take them in the morning, and you get up, you get started, and a lot of them last twenty four hours. So you want to wake up in the morning and get that twenty four hours start. So I recommend for most people get on up, take them in the morning. And the good thing about the allergy medicine, if you take the medicines the way that they're prescribed, then you, you usually will do well with the medicines. So. But it depends. For some people, Allegra may work. For other people, Claritin may work. And it's okay to play around with the time of day that works best for you. But for most people, first thing in the morning. Oh, okay. Let's see. Where are neti pots sold? Neti pots are sold in pharmacies or in grocery stores. So you can go to yeah, your local pharmacy. They're definitely over the counter. And just ask for a neti pot, especially this time of year. The pharmacists are ready. So grocery store or pharmacies. Okay. And the pharmacists will, I guess, if you're not, if it's not just visually there, they can direct you. They'll direct you to it. And they know what it is. Okay. And if they don't, tell them to Google it. <laughs> That'd be fine. Oh, my goodness. All right. Um, what's the best medication to take over the counter? How long should I take them? And are they addictive? That is a good question. So the best ones are the ones that have been studied. Most are the ones that I'm mentioning, like the Loratadine or the Claritin, Zyrtec, Allegra. And when you're taking them seasonally and taking them as they're prescribed, then they tend not to be addictive. Of course, everyone's body is different, but they're prescribed at doses that should not be addictive. Now, the ones that can have addictive position, addictive potential are the sedating antihistamines, like the diphenhydramine or Benadryl, where people are taking 50 milligrams, 100 milligrams. You need to be careful with the Benadryl. And if you're taking it every single night in high doses, then your body may become dependent upon it for your sleep or dependent upon it. So consult your physician, especially about the 
sedating histamines like Benadryl. But for the non-sedating ones, the Allegra, the Claritin, the Zyrtec, take them how they are prescribed or use them as directed, and you should be fine. They have a very low addictive potential. Okay. Well, the 12 and a half milligrams for me is like, does the job. <laughs> that, <knocks> it <laughs> that takes it on out for you. So at 100 milligrams, is that... Are people prescribed it daily? Or? No, and that's not that's not what a physician prescribes. Okay. But a lot of times, people well, who have allergies and these allergies keep them from sleeping. Mm -hmm. They'll take Benadryl or diphenhydramine not only as an antihistamine to help with the symptoms, but also to make them go to sleep. Oh, okay. And anyone who's ever suffered from insomnia, where you don't sleep well, mm -hmm. will understand that it's very frustrating. So even if twelve point five milligrams knocks you out, if it doesn't knock them out. They may say, oh, let me take 25 milligrams. Mm -hmm. That did all right. Let me take 50. Let me take. And that's when you can get into trouble where you can become addicted okay. if you're taking high doses like that. For, so for the Benadryl, consult your physician on the dose that's recommended for you. And on the box, when the use is directed, they don't have 100 milligrams right. as being the recommended. But folks like to do their own thing <laughs> to combat seasonal allergies. But I want you to treat them in the safe way. Okay. <laughs> I don't have any problems. <laughs> okay. Um, this about does it, Dr. Fisher. You have any final words for our viewers? Or? Well, just remember that spring has sprung, and a lot of y'all are out there complaining. Y'all complained all winter long because I heard you. You were mad because it was cold. You were mad because you had cold. You were mad because it was too cold and your jackets weren't keeping you warm enough. And then all you've done. You just sat up here and you prayed for spring to come. Well, spring is here. And now you're complaining because you got pollen all over your car. And you're complaining because you have seasonal allergies. Well, it's okay to complain. But make sure you do things to be proactive. Go out there and try to prevent these seasonal allergies by doing the preventive things we talked about. Wearing protective covering, using the nasal saline, consulting your physician. As always, I want you to live your healthiest, happiest life. Make sure that you like this video, that you subscribe to my YouTube channel. And make sure you hit the notification button because when we do videos, you'll get a chance to know firsthand when the videos are coming out. Also, follow me on Instagram, Dr. Frida, and on Facebook, Dr. Frida. I thank you for watching. I thank you for your questions. And we'll see you next time. Until then.